No doubt about it. Dream Chaser is teetering on the edge of the abyss because it no longer has a launch vehicle as planned for its first launch. Who's going to save them? Well, none other than SpaceX. But it's not going to be the Falcon 9 rocket. So which one will it be? Falcon Heavy or the Starship? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. All right, as we know, ULA was very eager to proceed with its second launch in September because this is the final step before the new rocket can be certified to perform national security missions for the DoD. Meanwhile, Sierra reportedly informed ULA it had a significant risk towards making the September launch date and that it would have to step aside so the rocket company could move ahead with its certification. In a separate statement, Sierra Space said that despite the setback, their first Dream Chaser spacecraft, named Tenacity, is still on track for its first mission before year's end. Tenacity, along with the expendable Shooting Star cargo module, completed environmental testing, a series of tests to ensure the vehicle will survive the harsh conditions of launch and orbit in early May. The spacecraft was moved to NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida later that month, where they are currently undergoing final testing before launch. While the delay is a major disappointment for space enthusiasts eagerly awaiting Dream Chaser's launch, it's also a smart move by Sierra Space, as extending the testing period ensures that the efficiency and reliability of the first launch is going to be epic. They have likely also learned some lessons from the competitor Boeing with the Starliner spacecraft, realizing they cannot allow their vehicle to have any issues in space leading to failure like Starliner. Currently, Starliner's stuck in space and no specific return date back to Earth. Another reason for the separation of Dream Chaser and Vulcan could be mistaken collaboration from the start between ULA and Sierra Space. For ULA, they should not have chosen a developing vehicle as their payload. They should have understood this and needed to act quickly to get their rocket operational. Meanwhile, development of Dream Chaser is clearly slow and can't keep up with their pace. So, from Sierra Space's perspective, choosing Vulcan, an unproven rocket, was a risky move. The years of delay for Vulcan, with its first flight scheduled for January 2024, have demonstrated the risk of this decision. Both sides seem to have underestimated the complexity of syncing up their development schedules. When Vulcan's ready, the demand for its use is going to be high, while Dream Chaser might still be incomplete. Worst case scenario, Dream Chaser doesn't even launch this year. First, we have to remember that despite a busy schedule, ULA's production rate for Vulcan is not fast. On top of that, Vulcan's readiness is also tied to Blue Origin's BE-4 engine. As of now, it's July, and CERT-2 has yet to launch, so it's hard to even know when CERT-3 is going to be ready. Even the chance to launch Dream Chaser on CERT-3 is uncertain. ULA might shift that flight to a payload under the USSF's National Security Space Launch contract. Currently, Delta IV Heavy has retired, and Atlas V only has 16 missions left, all of which have been planned, mostly involving Kuiper satellite launches and Starliner launches. Therefore, Vulcan is going to be the main vehicle responsible for the USSF contract with a backlog of over 20 flights. On top of that, Vulcan has two missions, USSF-106 and 87, that need to be performed this year. The time for Phase 2 of the contract is running out, and ULA has been selected for Phase 3. All of this just reduces the opportunity for Dream Chaser to launch on Vulcan, potentially being delayed indefinitely if any other issues arise. So, now, without Vulcan, what is Dream Chaser going to do to fly? Yeah, at this point, only SpaceX can help the newest space plane. According to info since its launch, Sierra Space officials have always said Dream Chaser will be compatible with all launch vehicles, including Falcon 9. Quite frankly, Falcon 9 is the most frequently launched rocket of the year, with an impressive track record of reliability and steadily increasing their launch cadence. SpaceX can schedule launches within a few days and sometimes even hours, offering unparalleled flexibility. The ability to quickly turn around to meet unexpected customer demands is a significant benefit for any payload that wants to launch on schedule. Compared to other providers, SpaceX's track record is exceptional. Since the Falcon 9 flight failure back in 2015, nearly a decade of successful missions have followed. This level of reliability is a strong attraction, especially for demanding customers and critical payloads. Other launch service providers have encountered technical issues and more frequent delays, making SpaceX the reliable choice. However, as of now, Falcon 9 no longer seems suitable for Dream Chaser. With the addition of the Shooting Star module, the space plane's mass increases by 5.5 tons to Dream Chaser's 9-ton launch weight. 
Although still within Falcon 9's capabilities, Dream Chaser requires a powerful second stage in aerodynamic handling of its lifting body. This means Dream Chaser needs larger fairings like those designed by SpaceX for Falcon Heavy. Falcon Heavy is another SpaceX rocket that offers high reliability with a perfect track record, albeit with less frequent launches than Falcon 9. The robustness of Falcon Heavy for more demanding payloads provides an additional layer of assurance for partners that need those reliable launch services. If Sierra Space is not in a hurry, what they could do is wait for SpaceX's Starship to complete a couple more test flights. The world's biggest rocket, Starship, is not picky about the type of cargo it carries into space. It's really exciting to think about what's going to happen in the future. Please share your thoughts in the comments. And with that, I want to give a big shout out to Clarence, who always checks out our videos. Thank you so much for watching, brother. And everyone else, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get the latest news videos every day. All right, getting back into it. With the assistance of the Shooting Star Service Module, Dream Chaser can transport up to 5,500 kilograms of pressurized and unpressurized cargo to the space station, including food, water, supplies, and scientific experiments, and then come back to Earth. Dream Chaser can return critical cargo weighing up to 1.5 tons with a gentle runway landing. Compared to the cargo missions of Dragon, which average around 1,500 kilograms of pressurized cargo, and Cingus with a higher payload of 3,700 kilos, Dream Chaser is somewhat more robust. This increased capacity is due to its separate cargo module specifically designed to hold about 3,400 kilos of waste from the ISS. The waste module will be discarded during descent and then burn up in the atmosphere. On Dream Chaser itself, it's set to handle up to 1,800 kilos of work. Additionally, designed for high reusability, this vehicle helps reduce overall costs, offering quick turnaround between missions. Its ability to launch on multiple vehicles and land on various runways makes Dream Chaser a flexible choice for reliable transportation. After leaving the space station, the Dream Chaser cargo system also provides disposal services through the Shooting Star transport vehicle. After detaching from Dream Chaser, Shooting Star safely burns up in the Earth's atmosphere. The spacecraft was initially designed as a crewed space plane, part of NASA's commercial crew program, capable of carrying up to seven astronauts to and from the space station and other low Earth orbit destinations. Dream Chaser is 30 feet or 9 meters long, about a quarter of the total length of the space shuttle, and can carry up to seven crew members. The crewed version of Dream Chaser shares about 85% of the cargo system, limiting fundamental changes to windows, environmental control, and life support systems. Additionally, an integrated main propulsion system provides abort capabilities and major orbital maneuvers. And last but not least, the Dream Chaser space plane is a multi-mission vehicle capable of supporting various LEO needs. It can be customized for both domestic and international customers through vehicle configuration, launch site, destination, landing site, duration, and a ton of other variables. With its unique design and capabilities, it's sure to be favored by NASA, as it'll remind us of the shuttle era. This will certainly make the space race even more exciting. With its inherent potential, it can indeed create competition with other major players like Dragon or Starliner when it becomes operational. However, outcompeting and leading the space race is very challenging, if not impossible, for Dream Chaser right now, as SpaceX's Dragon is establishing a very dominant position. With 13 crewed flights and 30 cargo flights, Dragon's milestones are enormous, and Dream Chaser could take several years to reach that. But against another competitor like Starliner, it's entirely possible. This might be a reasonable goal for the Sierra space team. Hopefully, they'll soon resolve the current issues and devise reasonable plans and timelines for their space plane, making the space race even more exciting in the coming years. All right, that's it for today's episode. With that, we thank you so much for checking it out and hope to see you back here next time.